Hey there, is today your first time here? Or maybe your first time in a while? If so, maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. Well, we'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together, following Christ. Our guide is the Bible because it's the divinely inspired Word of God and it will never take us in the wrong direction. Along the way, we hope you'll see that we are welcoming and spiritually passionate and that getting to know you is a big deal to us. We know that the road is rough sometimes, but we'll work really hard to bring you practical and relevant messages to equip and encourage you through life's ups and downs. We want you to know that we care about this community and we believe that it's our job to make it a better place. So no matter who you are or where you've been, we're glad you're here with us today. And we hope that you'll join us on our journey, following Christ and living out His plan for us. So welcome to church. Big, 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 big
Surrender my life to you. 
Change me, oh God, so I can have more time with you. Change me, oh God, so I can pray to you more often. Change me, oh God, so I can read your words more often. Change me, oh God, so I can love more like you. Whatever that change is, we're asking God to change us this morning, whatever it is. Change me. Change me. Can we sing that together?
So we know when we ask him to change us, he is going to do it. If the seasons are changing around us, God can definitely change us during this season as we prepare ourselves for the winter months and for the new year. We're asking God to do a mighty work right now. Who I feel the presence of God. God is with us. He's with you. He's with us here at the Gathering Christian Church, and he's going to continue to be with us through the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we get ready to pray, I don't know what is on your heart this morning. I don't know what you're seeking God for this morning, whether it's healing, whether it is um, an addiction, whether, whether it is clarity, whether it is to have a closer walk with him, whether it is your family, your, your relationship, your children, the anxieties around our election, the anxieties around who's going to be president of the United States. I don't know what the anxieties are and what it is that you're seeking God for this one, but I do believe, I do believe if you were to cast your cares upon him, as the Bible instructs us to do, that he will care for us and he will meet our needs according to his riches and glory. That's what we believe in. We believe that our God sits high, as is written in Psalms 113. He sits high and he looks low. He's not forgotten about us. He is with us. When we feel the breeze against our face, we know that is God moving. When you look up into the heavens and you see the clouds moving, you know that is God. When you look at the ocean waves as they come to the seashore and, and goes back, you know that is God. When you look at the mountains and the birds and, the, and creation, you know that is God. So if God can take care of the birds of the air, I know he can take care of you and I. So we stand confidently this morning that God is with us. He's with us in this world and he will be with us in wherever we go, but he's still with us in life and in death. God is still with us. In reading Philippians this week, I was reminded of what, Pete, what, what Paul was saying. He was like, Lord, you know, wherever I go, if, I, if, if it's time for me to be with you, then I know I'm with you. And if it's time for me to be here on, in this earth to be a blessing to your people, I know you're with me even on this side of, of the world. So wherever we go, we know that God is with us. Amen. So as believers, we, we don't walk by in fear. We walk by faith. We walk, we walk believing that God is walking with us through this journey, through the guidance and the leading of the Holy Spirit. That's what we believe in this morning. So Lord, I thank you. I thank you for the opportunity to pray unto you. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy most holy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who may have trespassed against us. And lead us, Lord, not into temptation, but Lord, deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever. And let all the believers say amen, 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 amen. And we're going to stand on his promises this morning with that prayer in mind. Before I take my seat, I just want to say welcome again. I feel the presence of God in the room. I feel him moving and changing us right now. I feel the presence of God and I hope you can unite with me with that belief that he is making a difference in our lives today, right now. I just want to remind you of the Gather Christian Church uh, mission and vision statement. I'll do the vision statement first. The vision statement is serving Jesus Christ by serving others. Serving Jesus Christ by serving others. And our mission statement is come as you are, be transformed, and then make a difference. Amen. And we're continuing to do that. I would encourage you to check out our Facebook page 
as we continue to put information out there for you to know what is happening in the Gathering Christian Church. We're going into the Thanksgiving seasons and there's going to be opportunities there for us to communicate and to give to the community. So please stay uh, connected through the Facebook page so you can be informed. Amen. Amen. And then lastly, I just want to give a shout out to the birthdays of October. Happy birthday to October. Celebrate so those who are celebrating in October. Ayende, shout out to Ayende turning 19. And for those of you who are celebrating October, happy birthday to you. And to the WOW ministry, don't forget, we have a few more days before we have our virtual power hour on November the 7th and November 21st. So make sure you email me so I can send you that link. Amen. God bless you and may God keep you. Have a spirit-filled day. Be blessed. Amen. Good morning and happy Sunday to you, to our gathering church family, partners, regular attenders. Thank God for being with us again on this Sunday to our first time and returning guest in a long time. We thank God for you. Thank you for spending a part of your, excuse me, a part of your virtual day with us. To those of you who are watching for the first time, uh, who are a little less formal, we say, what's up, what's good? Thank you for spending a part of your day with us. For those of you who have accepted the message, the ministry, and the methodology of Jesus Christ, for those of you who have cast your lot through the Christian narrative, please hang out with us this morning. Immediately following our service, we will have communion together. Uh, thank God again for each and every one of you. If you have been watching us or spending your Sundays with us for the last couple of weeks, uh, you know that we have been in a series entitled Mindsets. Last week, we evolved that series and we talked about walking. Uh, we literally said that you can walk, saunter, and even stroll into the unique purpose that God has set aside for you. We said last week that Sometimes we are in a hurry to get to a place and to do a thing. And we discovered last week that you can't rush or hurry God's purpose for your life. We looked at Abraham, then Abram, as he received a call from God and he walked into the unique place and space that God had intended for him. He walked through trouble. He walked through war. He walked through family loss. He walked through tough times, but he kept walking and he ended up in the place that God had originally attend intended for him. And so we want to continue in that vein this morning. We want to continue talking about what it means to walk. And this morning we want to take a look at Genesis chapter 32, a very familiar passage of text if you've spent any time in church, you would be familiar with this text once I begin to read it. Genesis chapter 32. Genesis chapter 32. And we'll start reading at verse 22. We'll read a series of verses this morning, but I want to provide some context for the conversation that we will attempt to have this morning. Genesis chapter 32, I'll be reading from the NLT translation. And it starts this way. Verse 22, during the night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two servants, and his 11 sons and crossed the Jabbok River with them. After taking them to the other side, he sent over all his possessions. This left Jacob all alone in the camp, and a man came and wrestled with him until the dawn began to break. When the man saw that he would not win the match, he touched Jacob's hip and wrenched it out of its socket. Then the man said, let me go for the dawn is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go until you bless me. What is your name? The man asked. He replied, Jacob. 
Your name will no longer be Jacob, the man told him. From now on, you will be called Israel because you have fought with God and with men and have won. Please tell me your name, Jacob said. Why do you want to know my name? The man replied. Then he blessed Jacob there. Jacob named the place Peniel, which means face of God. For he said, I have seen God face to face, yet my life has been spared. The sun was rising as Jacob left Peniel, and he was limping because of the injury to his hip. Even today, the people of Israel don't eat the tendon near the hip socket because of what happened that night when the man strained the tendon of Jacob's hip. The word of the Lord is blessed. This morning, I want to talk from the idea of limpology. Limpology, the study of the limp. God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the principles and the patterns that exist that allow us to be able to extract them, utilize them, and leverage our life for the better of ourselves and for others. God, I pray that you will provide clarity of thought and precision in expression. God, I pray that somebody's heart would be stirred, moved, encouraged. God, I pray that someone will be challenged to look at your word and you differently today because of this conversation. We commit this portion of our service to you in Jesus' name. As a kid, I would innocently, sometimes naively, and often ignorantly, to be quite honest, laugh at people who had challenges beyond their control. Even now, I look back on that brief period as a kid in shame. Though the Lord quickly touched my heart and gave me a unique compassion and empathy with all people and for all people, I have learned that what you see is not always what is. I have learned that behind our Physicality often runs a deep narrative. Brian Stevenson, that phenomenal civil rights lawyer, social activist, and fighter for and against, or should I say, against mass incarceration, particularly of men and women of color, tells a story of an encounter that he had with the man after giving a presentation. He said during his presentation, he noticed sitting in the back, there was a man who was staring intently into his face. And he said, quite honest, it made him a little awkward as he was giving this presentation. When the presentation was over, a line was formed and people were shaking his hand and having small conversation and telling him, thank you for his words and telling him how of a job he had done in this presentation. And he said, waiting in the line was this man who was staring intently at him during the entire presentation. And this man was waiting in his wheelchair. And Stevenson said, when this man got to him, Stevenson said, quite honest, he was a little awkward. He didn't know how to take this man when he pulled up to him. And Stevenson said, the man said to him, what? People often look at me differently or funny. Stephen said, the man said to him, do you see this scar? Do you see this scar? Do you see this scar here? Do you see the scars on my head? He said, these are scars of love. The man went on to tell Stevenson about how he fought and marched for civil rights of people in the 60s and, and in the 50s. And, and he said to Stevenson, these are scars of love. And he said to Stevenson, you keep going and you keep fighting. In Genesis chapter 32, Jacob gets into a wrestling match that changes 
his life. And the result of that wrestle was a life long limp. I'm sure there are those who see but don't know the story behind what they see. I bet they didn't know that King David was a shepherd before he was a king. I, I bet they didn't know that his dad, David's dad, thought so less of him that he failed to mention him to the judge and prophet Samuel when he stopped by their house looking to anoint the next king and leader of God's people. I bet they didn't know that Esther was adopted before joining the royal court as the primary queen. Jacob fought. Jacob grappled. Jacob struggled physically with God. Jacob wrestled with God and he won. I believe it is in the wrestle that our character is fortified. Our intentions is clarified and our determination is solidified. That is so good to me. At that moment, on the east side of the Jordan River and the north side of the Jabbok River, Jacob was not just wrestling against his past, but for his future orientation. That is so good to me. The next time they ask you how you are doing, tell them wrestlers wrestle. <laughs> the next time they ask you how you are doing, you Tell them that fighters fight. As I, as I make my way to the finish line of the tape of this message, there are two things that stood out to me. Two things that, that captured my attention and my imagination. Two things. The first thing that stood out to me was this. God started the fight. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God initiated the the wrestler. Some of us think every time opposition hits, it is the enemy. We think every time opposition comes our way, it is the enemy's fault. We believe every test and every trial is from the devil. Mm -mm. No. Before the carpenter, the master teacher, the Mahdi, the Messiah, the Lord and the Liberator performed a miracle. He was tempted by Satan, but he was tested by God. Go read your Bible. But, but secondly, not, not only did God start the fight, but the second thing that stood out to me was that Jacob marked the occasion. Mm. He, he understood this was a milestone in his growth. He, he recognized at the point he couldn't go back to what he was. At that moment, he knew the trickster, the supplanter in him, the heel in him was no longer a part of who he was. At that moment, the old had passed away and the new had come. He was in fact a new creation. He marked the location, he marked this occasion by calling the place Peniel. In other words, he said, I saw God face to face and I lived. Can I ask you a very personal question this morning? Have you marked that transformative moment in your life? Have you marked that Kairos, that divine time, not watch time, but that divine time. Have you marked that Kairos moment in your life? That, that catalytic, that action changing moment in your life? Have you continued to remind yourself of what God did, what God is doing, so that you can be encouraged about what God will do? Have you marked that moment? In your life, somebody type, mark my transformation. So somebody type, marked by God. 
There are three takeaways in my estimation to ensure that your limp counts. As I, as I push through the tape of this message, that there are three takeaways to ensure that your limp counts. This weekend, my wife and I watched a movie. For those of you who know me, you know that I'm a real movie buff. I rock with sports and I rock with movies and not a whole lot else in between. I'm a, so, so I watch movies uh, profusely. And this weekend, my wife and I watched a movie called His House. It, it's a, an Africanized version of us. It, 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 it's, a, it, it's, a, it's a movie about Sudan refugees who make their way to England seeking safety from the war that's taking place in their country. And it focuses on this husband and wife who make the journey, but a host of others didn't, including a young lady that they took with them as their daughter. And as they get an opportunity after being held in the detention camp, after they get an opportunity to perhaps become a citizen uh, through a trial to see if they can live and how they would navigate in this house that would be provided for them, they quickly learn that the house was haunted, or so they thought. Really, the haunting in the house was the trauma of them still wrestling with the passage of coming from the Sudan over to England and the lives that were lost, including the young lady that they had made their daughter. And it was only until they confronted their trauma that they began to find a place of peace. That there are three takeaways to ensure that your limp counts. One, I, I, I think that you have to wrestle with your past orientation. I, I, I think, secondly, you have to wrestle with your present orientation. And then third, you have to wrestle with for your future orientation. You have to wrestle with your past orientation, not wrestle against necessarily. You have to wrestle with your past orientation. Too many of us try to act like the things that occurred in our past didn't take place. And so we try to move forward without being honest about the things that had already happened. We try to move forward without dealing with the realities of our past. And so we don't need to necessarily wrestle against our past. We need to wrestle with our past orientation. But not only do we need to wrestle with our past orientation, we need to wrestle with our present orientation. We need to wrestle with the realities of what we're dealing with right now. We need to wrestle with the reality of the spaces that we occupy right now. We need to wrestle with the reality of the things that we are enduring and experiencing right now. Too many of us try to act like where we are isn't what we're doing. Act like where we are isn't where we are. We try to act like what we experience is not really what we experience. And so we're living this false experience. We're living this dichotomous kind of a life, trying not to deal with the realities of where we are. If we're going to move forward in the spaces that God has already intended, we have to wrestle with our present orientation, our present place, our present space, our present location, our present angle, our present mindset. Stop acting like where you are doesn't count. Too many of us are looking ahead without enjoying a part of where we are. Too many of us are fantasizing about where we want to be and not dealing with the reality of our current experiences. I'm preaching to somebody real good. And this kind of conversation ain't based on what you don't have or what you do have. This conversation is uniquely crafted around where God has you. Wrestle with our past orientation, wrestle with our present orientation, and then you have to wrestle for your future orientation. We have to wrestle for our future orientation. We have to wrestle for the place that God has already revealed to us. We have to wrestle for the spaces that we know God wants us to enter. We have to wrestle for those locations that God has already uniquely designed for us. We have to wrestle for those kind of spaces. And so if we get stuck where we are, if we get stuck where we were, and, and we forget that God 
created each of us uniquely with a purpose that will not only bless us but others will never get an enter into those spaces that God has already preordained for us. Go check out Ephesians 2 and 10. It says that we are God's workmanship created and crafted in Christ Jesus to do good works that God has already prepared in advance for us. We are God's masterpiece that he created in advance for us to do good works. I need somebody to recognize that you have a responsibility and a right to remember your past, to embrace your present, and to fight for your future orientation. Hmm. The Bible says that they won't eat that particular part of, of, the, of the tendon now because it is a reminder of Jacob's wrestle. And Jacob wrestled all the way into the promised land. Jacob wrestled until his name was changed. Jacob wrestled until he shook off the old character. He shook off the old narrative. He shook off who he used to be. Jacob wrestled, and when they saw Jacob, they were reminded of what Jacob used to be, what Jacob used to do, where Jacob used to be, where Jacob was, and where Jacob ultimately ended. Are you willing to wrestle with your past orientation? Wrestle for your present orientation, wrestle with your present orientation, and then wrestle for your future orientation. If you're willing to wrestle, somebody just type, wrestle for me. Come on, rock with your boy. If you're willing to wrestle, somebody say, I'm wrestling. Somebody say, I'm willing to wrestle. Somebody say, I'm going to fight and wrestle for my present and my future orientation. I'm out of here. But I need is someone to know that the various The various things in your history, hmm, you were willing to wrestle for. I, I need somebody to know uh, that, 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 that 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 limp woo, in your history hmm, is worth fighting for. I need somebody to know that 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 limp reflects God's direction in your life. I need somebody to know that that that, that limp reflects your purpose. I need somebody to know that lip reflects your destiny. I need somebody to know the next time they see you, you tell them that this lip belongs to God. Mm. Mm, I'm talking to myself right now. Uh, uh, I need somebody to know that that lip is there as a reminder of God in your history. Now somebody needs to know that that lip is a part of your direction. That, that lip is a part of your purpose. That lip is a part of your direction. That lip is a part of who God has made you and what you ultimately will become. That lip is a part of your destiny. That lip is a part of the unique way in which God created you. The next time they see you limping, you tell them that this lip belongs to God. I'm done now. But, 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 but Jesus lived to the cross. Jesus had scars on his back from being beaten as he was making his way to the cross. Text tells us that he was, he was limping so bad that a brother, yeah, and a brother, I mean a brother in that context, a brother had to come and help him carry his cross to his place of purpose and destiny. Our Lord and Savior lived to the place that he would ultimately be that would change our destinies for forever. Our Lord lived. If our Lord can live, so can you. If our Lord lived, so can I. If our Lord was willing to live, so can we. Stop acting like you ain't been through nothing. Stop acting like life has always been great for you. Stop acting like everything has been rosy and peachy. Stop acting like things have been perfect for you. All of us have a limp. What's yours? Are you willing to embrace the limp that uniquely defines you? Are you willing to embrace the limp that has your name assigned to it? Are you willing to embrace the limp that will cause you to make your way and 
to your promised land. Make your way in to your purpose. Make your way in to your destiny. Make your way into those spaces that God has already carved out. Are you willing to limp in order to be able to do what God has already uniquely called you to do? I'm out of here. Without getting political, I need somebody to limp if you haven't already to the polls. I need you to make your voice count. I need you to recognize that you are relevant. I need you to recognize that the stars that you hold, that the places where you've been, that limp counts in the uniqueness of the communities and the spaces that we occupy. Let's play our role as we limp and make ourselves heard. Limpology, it is recognizing that when you wrestle, with God and for good, you ultimately land in the spaces that God originally intended. I want us to take communion together. This is a spiritual practice and ordinance in the church that deserves our attention and our regular practice. As you prepare to gather your elements, whatever they might be, the, again, the elements are not as important as the symbolic gesture that it represents. Jesus limped to his place a purpose and destiny on behalf of humanity. Jesus represented limpology. And because our Lord limped on behalf of us, it is our honor to say thank you for this gesture. If you have your elements, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 says this. For as I pass on to you, Paul speaking, what I have received from the Lord himself, on the night when he was betrayed, the Lord took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us eat together. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us drink together. These are the elements of God for the people of God. Stay tuned. We have a few announcements. I want to make sure that you hear those announcements. Don't tune off. One of the best parts of the service is the opportunity to not only know what's going on in the life of our ministry, but also an opportunity to contribute tangibly through your gifts, your tithes, and your offerings. Salvation is free. Come as you are. But there is a cost to operating ministry. And we are only able to do that by your continued generous gifts. And so we thank you in advance for those who have been faithful and consistent in their giving. And we're praying for those that you might experience the blessings from the gift of giving. We thank God for each and every one of you. Stay tuned for the announcements. We think you'll be blessed. See you next week. Peace.